investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman on this Tuesday, the 29th of August, and we're looking at the Dow up 119, 120. We're looking at something very interesting here. I spent a lot of time trying to decipher this to say, was this support line, this Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line, which has hit so many times, more than just a springboard. I've called it a springboard now for a bounce. That's what we've been expecting. And and then I think it starts to fizzle. But the fizzle doesn't mean to say it has to because it's in a sell mode in the daily. Nothing in the weekly yet. A sell mode in the daily because the uh, pink 9 period moving average is still strongly under the 14. The MACD is still very weak. It is improving but still very weak. On balance volume is okay. Stochastic has rallied over 20% at 21%. But the weight of evidence is suggesting that rallies will start to falter and that we should come back and do at least some testing of this gap area in the Dow, which is in the 34,200s. We're, we're three, 400 points above that. That's very nice. Uh, now, within that context, let's just look at the S&P. It's the same thing. The S&P hasn't gone above yet. It could still do that very easily in the next couple of minutes even. Above the 4558, yep, 830 high of the 24th. Uh, that, would not, that would start a leg B. A gray leg B, I should change that. That should be gray. Gray meaning that I haven't got a buy signal yet to a buy mode. Uh, maybe, maybe this gives me a buy signal by the end of the day. I don't think so. Uh, the weekly chart is still holding very nicely. Look at the QQQ. It's the same thing. In, in fact, it's still way underneath that candle of the twenty uh, of the twenty fourth, which had a high of uh, a high of three seventy two seventy four. Here we are, three seventy point thirty three. Not far away, but far enough to say it hasn't got there. Um, and if you're looking at the technicals, here the technicals are improving a little bit. Let me just show you on my chart which I'm going to go to now for a, for a different reason. So this is a cute, uh, a while I've got this. You see this chart, you don't have to know what it is. It, it turned positive with the green nine, green nine period moving average over the 14 uh, back on the uh, 31st of July. The low itself was on the 13th of July. Look how long it took before the pink to turn green. It did. And it stayed green. And look at that price. And the price is making higher highs and higher lows. So within that context, this is the dollar index chart. And if you're looking at the dollar index chart, and in the den it says the dollar is down 500 ticks uh, since 10 a.m. So it's still saying this is a chart to monitor because for the green 9 pre moving average, this is, I, I believe this is going to be very much like the Dow that we waited and waited and waited after we got that August 1st high to, to the exact top where we saw the reversal, that we are looking at this maybe making some kind of a top here because it's getting close to the previous high on the left side. If I just do this as a, a – oh, I shouldn't mess the chart. Oh, I will. If I did this just as a measured move from the left side high to the low that was made right there – and now let me just double check because I'm doing it by eye. Yep. Right there, move it over one. And then go to the right and say, okay, where are you? And it says that at this particular point, the dollar index has done a one-to-one -one on the left side. That's the number of bars on the right to the number of bars on the left. Uh, let's have a look here. That high was 104.31. Today's high is 104.36. This is an unbelievable technique. I developed it years ago, but I don't always use it. I don't always remember to use it, but I've used it so much more lately. Look at this. Who would have said that the dollar on 
the dollar index on the 29th of May at 104.31 would dive down, look at this, to 99.74. That's big for the dollar. And then take exactly the same number of bars in a cup formation, or in this case, it looks more like a V-shaped formation, to go back to the exact day of this, this technique. I don't even know what to say. It's just, it's so fascinating. To the very day, it goes back to within pennies of that previous high. So this says right here is where the dollar could start to see some weakness. It doesn't have to. I'm just saying it could start to. But for that green period moving average to go pink, I think 102.70, somewhere in the, in the mid 102s is what's needed for the dollar. So if that's the case, I was right in the middle of something else, right? But that doesn't matter. What I'm looking at here is, let's just go to the EUR, USD. And look at that pink. That pink says, wow, for the euro at 1.0835, to actually see the pink change to green, that's the 9 over the 14, I, I would say it has to be up at the 1.96 area. That's kind of the way I'm looking at it. Uh, for the USD, JPY, for the yen to turn around, and this didn't do the one-to-one -to, -one to the left side. It broke out to the upside, and the 9 is still really strong over the 14. The price is not that much higher than it. It's actually lower than it had been in distance, the, the distance between the price and the 9 period moving average and the 9 between the 14 that it was back on the 16th, but it's still acting very well. Let me see if the dollar is updated now. DXY. Uh, now we're up 23 ticks. Hmm. I think, does anybody have the actual current price of the dollar? If I'm looking here in the den, somebody. Okay. All right, well. Uh, it must have given it up a, a little bit more than I've got anyway. But I'm just saying, it's already achieved everything that it had to do, left side, right side, price, time match. That's perfect bar symmetry. Now let's see what happens, all right? I was at, in the middle of the QQQ. The QQQ still pink, but it's getting real close to turning positive. I'm not dismissing this. I'm just saying, wow. <laughs> We have flattened out with a little W formation in the pink nine period moving average, about to a try at least to go above the 14 period moving average. So with that said, I just wanted to show you two, uh, two moving averages that can give you an incredible amount of information. And within that context, let me just see here, 103.92. All right, so dollar 103.92, DXY, 103.92. That's over there, and that'll see the little green line move a fraction down, but nothing much yet. So, oh, let me just do the same thing with gold, because gold is moving up nicely here. Gold is up 11 at 1958, and you can see that pink 9 period moving average is very close to turning positive. It's done it before for a nice rally in gold, then it turned pink again. So we'll see how that plays out. So far, the mirror image between the dollar pulling back and the gold rally that's working well. Okay, now let's go back to our story here. Oh, break coming up. Let me just quickly do this. I want you to show you the TLT. Are we going to see the same thing with the TLT? Well, box TLT is up $0.10 at ninety-five ninety-three. This is leg B. And the pink is not yet positive. But we, this, is, this is a good rebound. Certainly a good rebound. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up now. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, right, folks. So we got to look at this real quickly. The uh, one minute is just extended higher. The nine period moving average has been positive since uh, at 440, I think it was. Uh, four, yeah, 440. At 9.23 this morning, it's still positive, and the five-minute has gone to a leg D. Now, this is the question that I always have. Is this leg B in the 10-minute uh, confirmed by the stochastic flat at 90%? This is the E-mini um, futures, September futures, and uh, at 44.71, up 29 uh, is this going to be a leg B, pulls back, go to a C and a D? Can this be a two-click session? Well, I, I didn't do that because I was on the show. I was busy. But could this be a two-click session from the 440 area and just hold it? It's a possibility. But I'm really looking at this and saying, from my perspective at this particular point, I do believe this is a, a, a very nice counter trend bounce. So let's just put it that way. I do believe we're going to come back and do some testing of the Dow 34,200 to 34,000 area at some point fairly soon. And that will be the real test. Uh, is this the low that we saw the, a day a couple of days ago? Or is it A-low? I just think it's A-low. It's just really a, a very oversold. I said that to subscribers, we've got a very oversold condition. Uh, there should be some kind of a balance. Okay. So now let's go back to um, a couple of things that I want you to do real quickly that I was asked about. Can I look at Apple? Yeah, look at this. Apple <clears throat> having a nice move today up at $1.83 at $182.03, showing a leg B. I have, to, I have to do quite a bit of work now to say, is this really the start of a uh, really a start of a big move to the upside? Apple going back to the high in the 190s. Um, it's at 182. I think that this is just a bounce. If I look at the weekly chart, that weekly chart is very close to turning negative, but it hasn't. So I don't want to anticipate it. I want to say there's a possibility. It's broken from the the up channel to the downside. It's almost done a one to one to the downside, um, and. We'll go from there. At this particular point, you've got Amazon, same thing. Amazon's um, not doing all that well. The, the daily is in a sell mode. The weekly is still fabulous. The monthly is still pretty good. Looking at uh, what was the other one? I want to look at Microsoft. Microsoft trading now up uh, 271 and 326. In the lower range, did this price, uh, this uh, bar symmetry move, peak D in the day in the weekly chart? Ah. Let me tell you, it just looks that a lot of these stocks need time. Now, what was really fascinating to me is look at Cisco. 
Cisco is making a new recovery high. It's acting very well. 56, 56, up 36, a leg E in the daily chart. Let me just type that in there. A leg C is only a leg C in the weekly chart. I, this is, you know, this is what I'm saying, that there's a whole, there's a panoply of variants that we're looking at. One is there are some strong stocks that have held really well. There are some stocks that are actually at almost all or at all time highs. This is not at all time high, which is up in the uh, 64 area. Here it is at uh, 56. It's got a way to go. But there are also stocks that are just not participating at all that are really struggling. Um, you know, we look at Merck. Well, just the, the other day, there was nothing bad that you could hear about Merck. And yet, look how it's kind of struggling here after this peak D. Uh, it had a high of 126, all-time high near 120 just recently. It's not bad. It's trading at 109. But it's it's not doing, it's not leading. Whereas in the same area, Eli Lilly is at, as we speak, it's within pennies of an all-time high. So that's what I want to say. There's a rotation going on and checking the right instrument, the right symbol in the right sector is really the issue. Look at the SMHs up two and a quarter today. Nice candle, but wow, it is. Th these guys are really struggling. Look at NVIDIA. So within that context, I just want to show you that um, we are looking at a situation where there's a digestive phase in some. There's just a handful of stocks are going to all time. Let me just look at uh, um, CSTA. Uh, wait, CSTA? Yeah, no, not CSTA. Uh, CTAS, there we are. Just having, look at that, nice rebound off the highs, Syntas. And that's just telling me that the economy isn't really as bad. The This is the overalls, uniform rentals. Isn't that bad, but it is doing a digestive phase. See, so you have to look at WM. Who would have thought that waste management could just hit 175.58 in August of 22, 20, 22 get to 100, almost within pennies, get to that same level in, in uh, early Ju July, and now it's down at 157. There was a stock that I'd mentioned for years, not years, almost, almost decades. Uh, yeah, it probably is decades, because we had someone with uh, the same last name in, in the... Um, Investors Business Daily and the Boston Investors Group used to come regularly when we used to have these things and when I when I used to talk there. Um, and there it is. Look, this is a symbol is PODD, Insulate Core, Medical Devices. This was like Joseph A. Banks. It just kept going higher and higher no matter what happened. It just kept higher and higher like Ulta Beauty. But then a very quick peak, A, then a B, C, D, and then it pulls back. It makes an E at 324. Um, 84 back in November 2021 goes slightly higher four months ago and then it just look at that something is going on with this company look at that I, I, there's not a there's one tiny little green candle um, out of in months I'm not just talking about weeks or day. this is like a couple of months so there are stocks that are just and this is in the medical device area so M MDT, Medtronic, it had a pullback. It's in the lower range. Boston Scientific had a fabulous move up in the low range. It had earnings, I think, the other day. Look at this. It was looking lousy from the all-time high that it made just uh, two months ago. Slumps down from the well, 54 area to the, what was that, 50? Yeah, un under 50. And now it's back at 54.18, a nice candle today, follow through after the uh, gap up candle yesterday. So as I say, even in a sector, particular sector, you've got to be really careful and very selective. Now, a couple of things I want to look at here. I had a question about uh, IYT. <clears throat> IYT is in a sell mode in the daily. The weekly chart, the 9 is still over the 14. There are a lot of indications that are suggested that the iShares – Dow Jones Transportation Average Index Fund um, is going to give a sell signal in the weekly chart. It hasn't done it yet, but it is not participating. If you look at JETS, J-E-T-S, symbol, that's the U.S. Global JETS ETF, made a very nice high around the 20, uh, just 22 and a half-ish area, plummets down to the 18s, 
has a nice candle today under the 14, under the, the, the pink is under the 14, and both of them are underneath the 200 period moving average. That's in a cell signal upgrade to a cell mode in the weekly chart. That doesn't mean to say it couldn't have a big rally from here. I'm just saying at this moment, that's the designation. And you can see the monthly chart got repelled in the traffic wave inside uh, track repellent zone. I had a question. I just need to search it out quickly. Hi, Basil. Please take a look at LAC. Yep, LAC. I, I would like to look at LAC because uh, this is the uh, lithium American Corporation. Uh, let me just uh, give this a little refresh. There it is. Trading at 17.88 up 32 cents. Ah, this is interesting. This is that same pattern you're seeing all over the show. I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 130, S&P's up 30. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, so the uh, one minute e, e mini is still rallying very, very nicely here. Let me just go back. I, I want to do things in order here. I'm going to go to uh, LAC, but I need to show uh, MUX because I was asked about that earlier. Um, this is a very nice uh, Mercurian mining up uh, 32 cents, up 4% at 826. This is really a very nice because it pushed away from the 200 period moving average, uh, green nine period moving average, MACD is good, stochastic's a little, uh, not yet at 80%, but it's at 78%. This is, this is a nice looking chart. It just says that the 7.24 area, 758 to 724 will be very strong support 
uh, on any pullback. So now let me go back to LAC. LAC is not, uh, oh, it's LAX, the uh, airport. Let's go to LAC and we'll see if that was a peak right there. Uh, 14, 1747, 1750. Okay, so this is a plus sign. I don't start off with an up arrow unless there's certain conditions that are met and they very seldom met. That's a peak A, gray peak A. This is still a gray peak B. But why? Because the technicals are still really weak on LAC. And LAC is Lithium America's uh, Corporation. The 41.56 was a high in 2021 and is pulled average under the 14. Uh, this has gone peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. Is this a brand new? I have to always just continue first. Uh, e, F. So E, F, maybe slash B. So the question is, has it started a move up that is going to uh, hold and be um, and strengthen? And all I can say is, based on the weekly chart failure, every time it does this sort of thing, I'm just suggesting that at 1789, up point 33, if you are wanting to go long, I'm not sure if you are long. Was that the question? And I see. Um, and then another one I just need to write down here. Oh, we've got a lot to do. Okay, let's get going here. So, okay. So the question is, okay, getting it scrolling, scrolling. Well, there have been a lot of things going on since then. Please take a look at LAC. I see a bottom here. Oh, okay. Just I see a bottom here. Uh, looking quite attractive. Yeah. So I, I'm going to recommend this. I would treat it only as a trade. Now, the person who asked me usually likes a kind of a longer term uh, outlook. There is a match between the time sequence of this arch and we weekly and that arch. The stochastic's flat at 12%, the on balance weekly and the on balance volume. Look at the flat stochastic, uh, flat on balance blue on balance volume in the daily. I'm just going to suggest it's a bounce, but it could change if at 1792, you tiptoe in, I tiptoe in right here at 1792. I know that you're prepared to put in a stop. So I'd say the stop should be. Give it just a little room, just for a day or two, a $17.20 room. Um, it's a three-something percent. Um, and then what you want to see is that on any pullback, it really doesn't pull back very much at all. But what happens instead is it takes a sideways, even if it's an inside bar with a lower high and a, a lo higher low, um, you want immediate, as quick as possible, you want to get your leg C. Look at what it did before. It went to peak A in July. It went to peak A, very nice move up. MACD was turning up. Stochastic gave a nice, unlike like this, was coming down sharply and then reversed up sharply. So it turned around and went to peak B. Would I have gone to say that this is an up, upgraded um, buy mode? No. Because it never went to 80%. It stalled under 80%. I would have said, I got to keep a plus sign here until I can give an up arrow. So I'd be real careful. So it went to peak C and then a peak C minus and gave it back. So what I'm looking at here at 40%, way, way less in peak B than it was before. 40% says, maybe this is the start of a bigger move. But the weekly daily has to help the weekly by trading in the next three weeks at least for one whole week above 19.10 to be the above the black 14 period moving average. I think that's very difficult to do. So I'm just saying as a trade, that's 1791, just tiptoe in, get a feel for everything. Because if you're looking out longer term, it's not a big deal to miss this move because if it's going to be a more concerted effort, at some point it's going to close above the candle of the 10th of August, which is at 1927. And if it does it, the sooner it does it, the better it is. And then you can start looking at the weekly chart because that will impact positively the weekly chart. So tiptoe, fairly tight stop. Next question that came in was, could I look at ASA? ASA is American. <clears throat> ASA is the gold and precious metals uh, company. Uh, South African stocks, I believe, five or six South African stocks uh, registered. I believe it was in Bermuda. So it's really like a fund. It's gone to a leg B. I've drawn this in as a resistance level. It's testing it. Chapel Wave inside track 
repellent zone. It's just popped out of it a little bit at 1490. This is almost the same story because look, in the weekly chart, you got your dreaded H. You went below, closed below, then the within two bars, it had to close above this left side low of the week of uh, the 30th of June, 1415 was the low. And lo and behold, last week it did. This week is actually quite nicely above it as well. Um, that says this could turn into a cup formation. Oh, did I just hear a big, let me just see what that says. Uh, oh, we've got Bill in Boca Raton. Bill, how are you? I'm fine. How are you, Basil? I'm, I'm just going to finish my statement here and say, ASA, I would do the, exactly the same thing as LAC. So uh, the questioner wanted to know about uh, ASA. Start your positions. No, AM, AMD. I know, but this I'm just finishing up the previous caller so oh, that okay. I can get to you. Start fair. So start your position. In this particular one, I'd actually have a wider stop of, of about um, 90 cents. All right. You want to look at AMD, Bill. So here we go. AM, oops, AMD, advanced micro devices, should be having a bit of a rally today because it's just been decimated to the downside. Yep, it has. It went right to the 200 period moving average. What are you doing? Uh, well, I'm thinking about getting back into it. I trade it off and on, and I think it's. I think that um, back in August 14th or 15th, somewhere in there, it had some real down days, but it was very light volume. So I'm thinking that it, this thing could push back through that very easily, up to uh, maybe 110, 112. So you're actually looking for more of a trade because you've been doing this before and you've had success with it. Yes. So you see, what I like to do is this. Now I like to rest on, on your statement. I like to rest on the evidence that you've given me. I can look at the chart and I can have all sorts of opinions, but you've already experienced this in a, in a real time way and you've done it successfully. The fact that you're looking at it now for a balance is that you've done some analysis that says that you think this could be a little bit more than a balance, it could be a more concerted effort. So now it's up to me to say I either agree or I disagree based on my evidence. What I'm looking at here, oh, we've just got a, a bell going, a little break coming up. Well, I'm going to do just a little bit of work. Can you hold on? I can do. I'd be happy to. Fabulous, because I need to show you a couple of things here that suggest a bounce, yes, but the weekly chart is suggesting it's making lower lows and lower highs. So we'll talk about that. Be back. Dow's up 106. Rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be yours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, right, folks, we're back, and we're back uh, with Bill from Boca. We're looking at Ross Micro Devices. So, uh, Bill, this is what I want you to say to you. I can see a bit of a bounce here. I think the 10550 to 10650 area, the, the 9 or 14 period moving averages, I think that's going to be very strong resistance. I have a, a, a measured move that says to me, I could be wrong, but based on the techniques that I like to use, if it takes out the 9930 200 period exponential moving average support, 93. 68. Well, actually, that's that's a little far, but that would be the next major support level, and that that could be hit by this. I'm going to keep this in here by the 7th of September. So could it have a really big bounce before? And that would be a big bounce because of that very serious. You mentioned the candle of, of four days ago. That was a that was a pretty sharp pullback. So I'm I don't want to interfere with your thinking. I'm just saying that it's making lower lows and lower highs in the daily. The weekly chart, the technicals are extremely weak, but it hasn't crossed the pink. Nine period moving average will show up if it fails by Friday and starts to trade closer to 103. Then I think it'll turn pink. It hasn't done it yet. But I think there's a limited upside right now. So you're right in talking about a limited bounce, but I'm also going to say to you, I... I would put a tight, that's all I'm going to say to you is that I'd put a tight stop. I don't want to interfere with your thinking because you've done it successfully before. I have not done that with advanced, advanced micro devices, let alone do it successfully. So I'm really a bystander. I'm just saying from my eye, from all the, all the techniques that I'm using and utilizing here, I think it's going to fail quite soon. And you've got to be careful about that. And if I'm wrong... It's going to do it by maybe Thursday or Friday. And if it starts to trade under 104.10 or maybe 103.80, I think it starts its failure. So if you want to keep, if you ask for my advice, my advice is that if you do it, I'd have a tight stop. It has to work. Have you done it already or are you thinking of getting in? No, I missed it this morning because I had some uh, some stuff to do. I was ready, to, uh, you know. I wrote it down, do the first thing this morning, buy it, and I would have been in really great shape. You know, that's but, um, I, I know I exactly what morning, you're talking about. So, so you've missed um, almost four points, three to four points of risk reward. You, it's already up there, and that if you had if you had spoken to me earlier this morning, I would have said to you if you're going to do it. You got to do it right away, and that's exactly yeah. what you wanted to do. Now you can right. see the risk reward is just a little bit more, and I'm just going to say to you, risk reward wise, I think you could put it in even here, but you got to have a very tight stop and have a trading stop. And if you're away from your computer, I, I would want to be there so that I could raise the stop in real time rather than just kind of have a machine or just arbitrarily have a trading stop. Because you might be able to take some, you could do it twice and get about two points out of it if, if you're successful. Um, but the best, yeah, the best entry, I think, was missed. You're absolutely right. So that makes it tough. The now, reason, if you're using, if yeah, you're the using reason I like this long yep. to, to stay with a long term 
is while NVIDIA is obviously everybody's um, great um, semiconductor stock, they're only growing at a 20% average earnings, and um, AMD is growing at 40%. So So I'm thinking that sooner or later, you know, uh, the fundamentals are going to catch up with the, um, the trading. So actually what you're really doing is you're doing two things. You're talking more intermediate term and you're talking short term. So just decide yeah. which of the two, because I don't disagree with you. In fact, I think NVIDIA um, will keep coming back, but the high that it has seen lately might be real tough to get back to. But at the same time, it is, it's kind of the go-to stock for many people in the semiconductor. For instance, Marvell is the one that gets talked about with fantastic all this. And, and look what happened. It just plunged. So that's that's what happens with advanced micro devices every once in a while. Everything looks fantastic, and then it just absolutely tanks. Or uh, everybody's saying there's another one in town, and advanced micro just as it did back in 2021 to 23, and even to 24. Um, sorry, no, to, sorry, 24, uh, 22 to 23, the beginning of 20. Uh, no. That was 21. I'm reading. I, I had the 120 underneath it by accident. I'm, I'm reading that. But that spectacular move in advanced Riker devices, even if you just take the June 2019 low to the high that was made, 164, it has spectacular moves. So that's the only thing I'm saying that sometimes the whole story is really great and it doesn't participate. And sometimes the story looks very good. No, not great, but it looks okay, and yet they just f- do fantastically. So you know the stock better than I do, although I've wa- I followed it since the 1980s, I think, uh, with San- Saunders or Sanders, whatever his name was, when he was the, the chairman. So I, I, I think you have missed the, the best entry point today, but it doesn't mean to say it couldn't go further. But don't mix the shorter term with the longer term. Because what would have happened if you got into this morning, say at 10250, just off the low, which was 10179, that could have turned out for you for you an intermediate term one, because look, the, the nine period moving average in the weekly hasn't turned negative yet. So you could still get it holding as the price goes up. So that part right. of it you you miss. So I'm just saying don't don't mix the two. Get your short term trade if you're thinking of that. And if it holds and you, it holds for weeks, you've got yourself an intermediate term trade. But that basic entry that you've missed with three points of leeway, now it's a little tougher. That's all. But if you, ask me you. Just a, if you ask me about the chart, that 200 period moving average of 90, 99.34, I think that's like a magnet now. I think it's going to come back and test it at some point. That's, that's my thinking. Hope that helps okay. you. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. So, am I missing one? I did that. Oh, ISRG was a question. Could I please look at ISRG? I, that's in, in uh, surgical ISRG, intuitive surgical. Ah, they all have the same pattern off the 200 period move. Oh, I can't believe this is not notated. You know, this I I followed this ah oh, forever. Uh, this is A, B, C, D, E, and F, and we come down. Uh, I'm not sure what the question was with intuitive surgical. I'll try to find it here. Um, I think just to look at it. Uh, yeah, so I this is a stock that somehow or other, no matter how much it gets beaten down, it just keeps coming back. And my theory about this is I had a friend who has started a company using tools, just a, a few years ago, started a company using just your basic tools that their analysis and the proven analysis was it actually did a better job than something that's automated uh, electronically like intuitive surgical. But I said to him at the time, I said, uh, I said, Phil, do you think that the hospitals that are spending a million bucks to get these things are just going to throw it away? And that the surgeons who are using this electronic stuff are going to go for hand tools again? Well, that was the end of that business. I mean, not because of me. I, I was just mentioning it in passing. But no, it, it, it couldn't work out. So I, I, I like the stock. 
but I think this is a bounce, and I think it'll be retested at three or five. Two, if it retests 297, check that out. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. With rising inflation, rocketing interest rates, a volatile dollar, an uncertain market, there's an asset that all traders flock back to, gold. However, these irregular times also mean a regular gold market, which presents its own unique challenges. This brings up the question, what moves the gold market? This is a question I'll be answering in my next live webinar. On August 30th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., I'll be hosting a live free webinar for all those who subscribe to my newsletter, The Gold Report. The Gold Report has been in publication for over two decades, and I've seen just about every market gold has been traded in. This experience lends me great insight when trading gold and other mining equities, and now that insight can be ours. On August 30th, I will deep dive into gold, bonds, and the dollar, where they are now, how they affect each other, and what to look for when looking to set up a trade. Additionally, I will provide a comprehensive breakdown of the XAU, HUI, and GDX, as well as cover individual gold equities and answer questions live on the air. Subscribe to the Gold Report today so you don't miss this rare moment in gold. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. The BTC is just had that's a Bitcoin Fuse just had a huge spike this morning. Uh, it was down to 26, 25,000. Remember, I said, I'm not touching this for a while. We had a fantastic run where we had the GBTC fund, just to have not touched anything. It's becoming more interesting, but not yet. So the question came up, a couple of people simultaneously asked about ETH, -E, Ethereum uh, Trust. <clears throat> this looks to me like a news-related spike. So this is, I would let it rest for a day. I'm absolutely wrong if instead of just being a spike, because the technicals have turned up, but they're still not great, um, if it can hold and touch 1250, it's 1176 right now. If it can close above 1250 in the next day or two, then I have to consider that it's it's got a higher base of support, and I can talk about it. I'll talk about it more tomorrow. In the meantime, I, I'm considering this is a bounce in the market right here. It's a bounce, and we'll see what happens. And we a question came in: Where did we go back into? We still short the semis, but we haven't got back into the SOXS which we've had fabulous success three times short. Give it a little bit. I just need to see how we close today. I don't mind overpaying for it if I feel strong that the SMHs are coming down. When we just spoke uh, to Bill and Boca about advanced micro devices, and that was like almost a news-related spike. So with, with us said, by the, by after, I said to subscribe to my opening call, by after 1, 1 30, if the Dow is actually up plus 60s or more, that says it could have, it could have an up close at the end. 
But if it starts to give that back, and if for whatever reason, if it even slips to just a plus 20 or minus 20, then I think the next two days are going to be kind of tough. And let's just do the dollar once again. The dollar did pull back uh, 22 cents. I've got it now. Maybe I'm still late. Yeah, right here's the resistance area, and we want to go very closely. As I said, Howard Tom does his uh, webinar. It's great timing for this. Up $16 in 1961. Yep, we might be seeing some kind of a turnaround, but look at that USD JPY. Uh, the yen is put back a little bit in a leg F, but with all the technicals are so strong. You're going to be watching very close. Have a great rest of the day. Uh, safe, safe.